Welcome to our deep dive into one of the most fundamental concepts in modern JavaScript and Node.js development, the evolution from callbacks to promises to async await. If you've ever wondered why your JavaScript code sometimes seems to execute out of order, or if you've struggled with managing multiple operations that need to happen one after the other, you're about to discover the elegant solutions that have transformed how we write asynchronous code. Think of this journey as learning three different languages that all say the same thing, but each one becomes progressively more natural and easier to understand. Let's start with a scenario we've all encountered. Imagine you're at a coffee shop and you've just ordered your favorite latte. In the synchronous world, you'd stand at the counter frozen in place, unable to do anything else until your coffee is ready. That's obviously not how coffee shops work. And it's definitely not how modern applications should work either. In Node.js, we handle these waiting periods using asynchronous patterns, and the grandfather of them all is the callback function. A callback is simply a function that gets called when something else finishes. It's like giving the barista your phone number and saying, call me when my coffee is ready and I'll come pick it up. In the early days of Node.js, callbacks were everywhere. When you wanted to read a file, make a database query, or fetch data from an API, you'd pass a callback function that would execute once the operation completed. The pattern was simple enough. The first parameter of your callback would be an error object if something went wrong, and the second parameter would be your actual data if everything succeeded. This error-first convention became the standard across the Node.js ecosystem. However, as applications grew more complex, developers started encountering what we now infamously call callback hell. Imagine needing to read a file, then based on its contents, query a database, then based on that result, call an API, and finally save the response somewhere else. Each operation would nest inside the previous callback, creating a pyramid of doom that stretched across your screen. Your code would march steadily to the right with each nested level, becoming harder to read, harder to debug, and nearly impossible to maintain. Error handling became particularly nightmarish because you'd need to check for errors at every single level of nesting. This is where promises entered the scene as our salvation. A promise represents a value that might be available now or in the future. Or never. It's like getting a receipt for your coffee order. The receipt itself isn't the coffee, but it represents your eventual coffee and gives you a way to track when it's ready. Promises introduced three distinct states that made async operations much more predictable. A promise starts in a pending state, like your coffee being prepared. It then either fulfills with a value, like receiving your perfectly made latte, or rejects with an error, like finding out the espresso machine is broken. The beauty of promises lies in their chainability. Instead of nesting callbacks inside callbacks, you can chain operations using then and catch methods, creating a flat, readable sequence of operations. Each then returns a new promise, allowing you to transform data step by step, while a single catch at the end can handle errors from any point in the chain. But the real game changer came with async await, introduced in 2017. This syntax sugar built on top of promises made asynchronous code look almost identical to synchronous code. By marking a function as async, you gain the superpower to use the await keyword, which literally pauses your function's execution until a promise resolves. It's like having a magical ability to freeze time in your function while waiting for that coffee, but without blocking anything else in your application. The try-catch blocks we've used for years in synchronous code suddenly work perfectly for handling async errors too. What makes async await truly powerful is how it handles complex scenarios. Need to make multiple independent API calls? You can await them sequentially if they depend on each other, or use promise.all to run them in parallel and await all results at once. It's like ordering coffee for your entire team. You can either wait for each drink to be made one by one or place all orders simultaneously and collect them when they are all ready. The code remains clean, readable and maintainable regardless of the complexity. Error handling becomes straightforward with traditional try-catch blocks. Debugging is easier because the stack traces make sense and your code's intent is crystal clear to anyone reading it. 
As we wrap up our journey through these three patterns, remember that they are not competing technologies, but rather an evolution of ideas. Callbacks taught us how to handle asynchronous operations. Promises gave us better structure and error handling. And async await made it all feel natural. Understanding all three is crucial because you'll encounter them all in real-world code bases. Modern Node.js applications predominantly use async await, but knowing the foundations helps you appreciate the elegance of the solution and troubleshoot when things go wrong. The next time you write asynchronous code, you'll know exactly which tool to reach for and why. Thank you for joining me on this comprehensive journey through async evolution from callbacks to async await. Remember to practice these concepts hands-on and build real projects to solidify your understanding. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to help us build more such content. Happy coding and best of luck!